ব্রজাপুরে অনুরাগে বাস সাকি গান গানাতে আমার লিখিবে তাতে থাবাহি পুরাব অভিলাষ May I live in Brajapura with deep devotional attachment. My desires will be fulfilled when I am counted and written down among the Sakis. So my humble Dhanavad pranams and loving embrace to all the assembled devotees to Guru and Gauranga and to our dear Srimati Radhika and her beloved Mohan. So Baba Anandadas Babaji in his explanation he is giving us explanation or guidance how to live in Vrindavan with Anurag because that is Desire of Narottam Das Thakur. May I live in Brajapura with deep devotional attachment. So what is the meaning also of this deep devotional attachment and also on different levels in this human body as a sadaka, deha and also in spiritual life of a dasi, of an inhabitant of Rindavan when we have some spiritual realizations of our Siddha Deha. And that is very interesting topic. How to connect these both, how to understand these both, and to live in these both. Naratam Das says, May I live in Brajapura with deep devotional attachment. My desires will be fulfilled when I'm counted and written down among the Sakis. Living in Vraj with Anurag. In this verse or Tripadi, Srila Thakur Mahashai desires to live in Vraj with Anurag. Constant attachment and to be counted amongst the Sakis. So that is the meaning of anurag, constant attachment. And our Gurudev, he is explaining there's rag, attachment, and anurag means some something is coming from Radharani and Mohan, something is coming from spiritual dimension also. That is meaning of anurag, and that's why it is called constant attachment. It is something that is fixed in the heart and I can receive. I can receive a relationship, I can feel a relationship and I have an exchange. That is how Gurudev usually explains in simple words the feeling of rag and anurag. And in our state or at least in my state, it is not yet achieved this constant attachment. Means I am not constantly living in realization of my eternal spiritual identity. But there is a desire to reach it, and that is already very, very good. Actually, Shlanaratam Das Thakur himself in his Prema Bhakti Chandrika is explaining that there is actually only the difference of being ripe or unripe. Like a mango, like an apple, like an avocado. Sometimes they are so hard and when they are hard, they cannot be offered, they cannot be enjoyed. Or like the oranges also. When the orange is not very ripe, it, it, it is kind of sour and it's not so tasty. But when it becomes very ripe, it is sweet 
and very attractive. And the mango also, when it becomes very ripe, the color will become reddish and yellowish. And it will also emanate a very nice smell. So if we want to see at it in a very simple way, on our spiritual past, there is this development that it goes from ripe, uh, unripe to ripe. And with the help of, of Gurudev and the mercy of Rindavandam, we are developing from unripe to ripe. And when the ripeness is there, there will be a constant attachment. Living in Vraj with constant attachment means constant, uh, fully realized way. And here we can understand, Baba says, that Narottam Das Tako prays for living in Raj with Anurag both in the Sadaka and the Siddha Deha. That is also a very interesting statement. He is praying from his human uh, side or human being, and also he is praying in his internal spiritual identity as Srimati Radhika's maid servant. He is speaking in both levels. So that also proves to us that both possibilities are there and they are both important. In the case of Naratom Das Tako, we know he is fully realized and he has full access to his uh, spiritual identity. But at the same time, his service to Srimati Radhika and Krishna and Gauranga, of course, because he was there at the time he came with Gauranga, was to help all the devotees of the present and of the future to gain their spiritual identity and to help them in their steps in the lives. So that's why it is important to understand that there is a level that is from the human platform in our practicing stage, and there is a level in the elevated, more realized stage. But these stages, they somehow can also not be fully separated because they belong together. You know, it's not that I have a different identity here as a human and then the spiritual identity will be something else once the magic comes, <laughs> you know, the fairy fee, the magic wand comes and then ting, now you're a dust. It is a continuous ripening process. And in that ripening process, we develop more and more spiritual understanding and the understanding will be shown in our feelings, in our behavior, in our meditations and in our relations. It's a very natural and also good and easy to understand process. And Baba will explain to us now what is the difference of these different levels. He says, first we shall speak of living in Vrindavan with Anurag within the Sadakadeya, means from our human level. Anurag here does not mean the Anurag which is counted amongst the Staibhavas, for that cannot take place within the Sadaka body. Srila Thakur Mahashai reveals the aspiration to live in Braj with love, loving attachment and respect. So here Baba explains that yeah. There are, in our practice of bhakti, different stages of bhakti. For example, we have heard about the nine stages of bhakti. Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anatha Nivritti, Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, Baba Prem. These are stages of bhakti where we are practicing according to my own uh, ability to purify and to feel more attachment in a natural way. And these are all also, if you want to uh, collect these gems, 
written down in Madhya Leela in Chaitanya Chaitamrita. So that is the stages of bhakti of a practitioner of bhakti. And then there are nine varieties of prem. And that starts of sneha, man, pranai, rag, anurag, bhava, mahabhava, and then mohan and madana bhava. These all are happening on the level when we are living in our spiritual self. These are, to make it easy also, different kinds of feelings in relationship to Srimad Iradhika and Mohan and all the Brajabhasas. So we are now at the stages to develop in Bhakti and Baba is explaining that this Anurag, there is a level of Anurag which is only experienced in the spiritual body. But at the same time, Gurudev says, we have to understand that even now in our human body, we have relationships. And also in these relationships, we have these feelings that need to be developed. Rag for us means attachment to Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas. Rati or Rag, deep attachment. And Rag becomes Anurag when there is some exchange of love. When the other person that you really like also feels some attachment to you, when you notice that, and when something is happening on emotional levels, means you're doing service together and you're making plans together to go on holidays or whatever. These are just like normal examples. But in our life, in devotional life, we make deep relationships with our devotees with our sisters and brothers, and we try to do what Gurudev always teaches us in easy ways, love and action. That was my New Year's wish today. Let us all meet again and again in love and action feeling. Let's do love together. <laughs> Let's uh, you know, remember that we are love, we are parts of Srimad Radhika, and we are also want to help each other to feel it and to remember it. And that is my desire for 2024. Love and action more and more <laughs> according, you know, to the mercy that we have and that we feel with each other. So these are all um, words from Sanskrit that sound sometimes complicated and devotees feel, oh my God, too much of these, uh, you know, stages and too much of this you know science of bhakti but i i say for myself that at one point is becoming natural to hear about them when we hear more and more and we have the mercy of gurudev that he helps us he always gives us the baby food he always puts this little spoon in our mouth so we can easily digest and we don't feel um, discouraged or bored or hopeless. Hmm? So then with these baby food spoons that are already cooked, <laughs> like, you know, the nice soup that is smashed, you don't have to chew so much. And even especially us, we have no teeth yet. We are the babies. So we can only suck it. And it becomes easy and tasteful and also happiness will be there when we take our little baby spoons. Thus, Thakur, Srila Thakur Mahashai reveals the aspiration to live in Braj with love, loving attachment and respect. Srimad Rupa Goswami Pad advises the Raga Nuga Sadakas to constantly live in Braj. Even more so, those who are unable to live in Braj physically are instructed to aspire to live in Braj mentally. So that is a subject that we always hear again and again. And sometimes devotees, I feel they are like in different camps. The ones they say, oh, we have to be always in Braj. And then the others say, but Braj is not a place on the map. It's in the heart. <laughs> so it's both true. No? 
because it's all achintya beda abeda tattva means it is at the same time braj is a place and we can see that all the temples and all the pastimes and all the leelas and memories of radha and krishna are there and the baj you know the 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 uh, sadhus and those who do deep meditations are there and it's good to be there and everyone who is in braj for the first time they can tell what a special transformation happens right hari nam prasad do you want to share something how you feel in braj for the first time of your life um i have to put on the yes we can hear you well yes it's on oh radhi now something happened he got stuck and now we cannot hear you <laughs> no maybe you had the yeah the sound of the computer so anyway until he comes back i just want to share that we all have this experience how magic braj can be how much magic is happening in vrindavan in exchange with radha mohan with gauranga nityananda with the vaishnavas with the braj basis going to the holy places so much magic can happen there so many feelings can happen so many impressions are coming that have another quality from what we know they have another magic a magic that the soul is responding that my inner self is really attracted to and that magic is also happening when i connect myself with braj in my home in my relationship with radha mohan because again i want to remember that achintya beda abeda tattva if we cannot apply this if we cannot connect to this the magic will be only at one place but actually the magic of rindavan is always there where i can open my heart for it we know this also it can happen at home and in our relationships but often very often the mind is making it you know not possible because the mind is limiting myself or the mind is opening myself because we know although braj is a special place of magic and intensity and mercy we also know that this mercy and magic and intensity is not limited it is unlimited and it can touch my heart and my feelings everywhere and that possibility is eternally there but it depends on my own desire intensity or faith if 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 i can feel it right that's why in the 10 processes or the nine stages sorry of devotional service it starts with the shraddha if i have faith i can move the mountains that even jesus said faith and hope and love they can move the mountains but if the faith is not there and the doubts are dominating my mind and my heart then i live in the hole right we all know the difference so i think for myself it's very inspiring to to always keep myself open that wherever i am wherever i you know are walking around in this 
in this human body, I can connect by the mercy of Gurudev, by the mercy of all our teachers and, you know, the Goswamis are all Dasis, we know that. We can connect with the magic of Vrindavan at any moment. The possibility is always there. It depends how much I have faith in it and how much I can um, somehow connect to it and believe in it. And that's why Srila Rupa Goswami says or advises in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we should always aspire to live in Braj mentally. Even more so, those who are unable to live in Braj physically, that is that, that happens. Like even in the times of Lord Chaitanya, there were devotees, they were not able to go to Braj. They were living somewhere in some small villages in Navadvip or in Bengal or whatever. You know, there were many, many devotees all over India. They could not live in Braj. We are lucky nowadays that we only have to, you know, put a flight ticket and then, you know, easily, very in short time, in only 10 hours or 15 hours, we are in Braj. But those devotees who could not live there at that time because they cannot travel so long, there was no fl flights, there was only possibility and the big chance to live in Braj by heart and by mind. And why is this so powerful? The reason for this is that by the inconceivable power of Brajadam, Bhava, or feelings will swiftly awaken within the heart of a non-offensive sadaka as a result of living in Braj. So we have here the the proof that to live in Braj is a as a matter of a feeling of the heart and uh, also very simple and uh loving nature that we can connect to and we can remember and we can uh, feel the magic of Rindavan even at any place of the world. And that is especially important when we don't have a chance to always travel to Rindavan, maybe out of, you know, financial reasons or, or, or uh, health reasons or whatever. Or family uh, obligations. There are many things that are, you know, are coming mm -hmm. in our lives. But we still have the chance, and even so, the mercy to connect if we have a full faith in that. But often, what I can see, what I can see also in myself, that I see Braj on a very external level. Like last time when I came back from Braj, I was so sick. And it took me a time to come back to my face again in Braj because my mind was completely in charge <laughs> and said, now you will not go there again. You only become sick <laughs> or whatever. You know all, you all know that, you know, and it's not so complicated to understand that this is also mental and bodily platform. But still, we are there, right? But then again, after some time, when some mercy again comes into my heart, then I feel, ah, oh, you know, I will never give up Raj. I will never give up associating with uh, Gurudev, all the wonderful Vaishnavas who have, you know, this place to live and where I feel I belong also. And as long as my my legs will carry me, and the the possibility is there. I don't care how much the body will get sick or suffer. I will go to Braj. That is my firm, uh, you know, hope and also my feeling. And I will continue to seek the mercy of Shri Guru Gauranga and Radha Mohan and all the Vaishnavas, even though sometimes Braj is a, you know, so to say, challenge on the bodily platform. But then also later Baba will explain to us 
what is really Braj? It's not only the ex external Braj that I see. So the un inconceivable power, inconceivable means even magic power. That is not easy to, to understand how it works, this power, this magic of these feelings in spiritual Vrindavan. will swiftly awaken within the heart of a non-offensive sadaka as a result of living in Braj. And now uh, there is a verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Associating with the sadhus, with the holy man or woman, hearing the Bhagavat, serving the Vigraha, performing Nama Sanketan and residing in Braj, each of these five vital items of sadhana are so incomprehensible and wonderfully powerful that even if they are performed without faith, even the slightest contact with them by the non-offensive sadhaka will awaken bhava within the heart. So that is so beautiful that even if I don't know what I'm doing when I am in Vrindavan, I try to follow, right? I try to do some service. I try to listen. I try to, you know, go to RT or speak with the devotees. I try to take prasad. I try to chant. Many times I do it in a way that is non-conscious. That is not so deeply realized, right? We are all beginners. But then what happens? That... Even I am doing it with no big realization or no great, uh, you know, feelings. Still, because of the power, the inconceivable power of Shrimati Radhika, who is the queen of Rindavan, the dust will come in my heart. Her dust will come. Just when the sadhus, they see us, they become very compassionate. They have empathy. They feel us. And they say, look at this soul. My dear Swamini, look at the soul. It's the soul is crawling here again and again. <laughs> she is coming. Please be merciful. And it's not only external. When we connect with Gurudev internally in our prayers, in our feelings, in our dreams, also he feels us. I just heard a devotee say the other day that Gurudev. He knows all of his disciples and he feels them because his level of bhakti is empowered by Nityananda. He is getting all the mystical powers to connect with all of us in all different parts of the world even. And he feels us and he helps us because Nitai is everywhere, right? Nitai is the all-pervading Akanda Guru Tattva means that part of divine love that is not only at one point in you know on the on the map that is the all permeating of how do you say all, all pervading power of love that Sri Guru is sending to all of their disciples to help them to grow according to our desires also. That is the mystical power of love that is spread from teacher to student by mercy of Srimati Radhika, of Nitai, by inconceivable connections. So we always have to remember again, or at least I cannot say we, I, I always try to remember this Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. Especially when I feel some separation. Then I, I feel that, oh, everyone is together somehow, even over long distances. And we are connected. And all our progress, I want to share with you, is also connected. We are disciples of our Gurudev. We are the followers of Sri Gauranga, of Nityananda, of Radha Mohan's service, we, we try to be. And even only this trying and this feeling and this desire 
will connect us and we can all nicely progress together if there is the faith. If there is a belief and the faith. And that is something we ho hope to increase and help each other. But sometimes we also meet devotees that have a lack of uh, faith or a crisis of faith. And still we try to always give love and, you know, try to encourage them. Because without faith, it is a very, very heavy time in my life. I feel alone and I feel neglected or I feel I don't receive. But the point is, I cut myself off to receive. It's nobody else's fault. But the mind and, you know, I was telling, oh, it's that fault and his fault and her fault and the circumstances. But actually, it is not so. In the spiritual reality, there is no way that we are not connected when we are, you know, in loving connection by hearing, by chanting, by remembering. And now we are so lucky that we have these Zooms. And these Zooms, they have a magic. They have a power to connect us to Vrindavan. It's true. It's not only, a, you know, a ritual or a technical arrangement like watching TV. It is the, f the feeling that we are transferring to each other through this media. And we try to help and encourage and inspire each other in our different, different stages where we are. And that is also, again, a chintya, a beda, beda tattva. Means we are at the same time, we are here together, but also at the same time, every one of us is in their different homes, in their different apartments, in their different countries. But at the same time, we are here connected in love, in bhakti, in our desire to progress. So that is something, if I, if I feel it and think about it, I am so thankful that we have this chance and that uh, modern times are modern times. Because only by these modern technologies, we can connect like this and we can inspire. And so when we inspire each other, we can carry this feeling during, you know, whole day, whole night. And it will help me again to take up my mala and to go deeper and to pray more and more and more. So these five items of bhakti, we had this the other day also. Some devotees were sharing that, oh my God, so many practice in bhakti, so many stages, so many Sanskrit words, but there are five that are most powerful and very, very um, like a strong medicine. That is living in Braj, serving the Vigraha, our Takujis, performing Nama Sankirtan, singing the holy names. And that is not only singing in the temples or singing in big groups on the streets of some town. No, it is also my, also my same, you know, small singing here at home or even humming or remembering Mahamantra in my mind. It is all Nama Sankirtan, what is connected with the holy names in one form or the other. And these five, five items are so incomprehensible and wonderfully powerful that even, even if they are performed without faith, it will again grow in faith. Have you heard, have you, have you have this experience like me? Sometimes there is a down. I feel in the hole. I feel I have no faith. I have no uh, strength on myself. Uh, even the hope is low and there's some negativity. But, you know, because so much practice of this, I become more the observer of these times now. I don't fully identify with it. I see, okay, now there's this girl who wants to be a devotee. Again, she has a difficult time, but she will stand up again. You know why? 
because she has stood up already a hundred times. <laughs> so that is the hope we have. And then we do not fully identify with it. And then the faith will grow and the faith also will happen in the heart that it will come back. Even one time I feel that I lost it. You know what I mean. It's going in waves. And actually the level when it is completely steady, you know, and no more waves of ups and down and ups and down, this level, it is mercy also. It is mercy. It comes only by mercy. We cannot do it. But what I can do always, I get up again and I do my connection work, so to say, my connection sadhana, and the positivity will come back. So now Baba is asking a very interesting question. In this proper sequence of sadhana, bhajan, the sadhaka has different steps to take. From Shraddha up to Asakti. To be able to arrive in the kingdom of bath, of feeling. You all know that. We have the Shraddha is the first step. Faith. Some faith that this is a good thing to do, this Bhakti. I want to try it. Up to the level to Asakti. Intense, steady, completely convinced and also overwhelmed feelings of attachment. Continuous. These are steps, but they can also happen, how do you say, without the order, you know? There was a time in my bhakti when somebody told me, in each step of bhakti, you will take one lifetime. And I thought, wow, that sounds like a you know, long way to go. <laughs> that make me a little bit <laughs> crazy, you know. <laughs> but I was so, uh, I was just listening and I thought, okay, then, then I will take it lifetime by lifetime and by the mercy of uh, Guru and Goranga, one day I will be there. But actually then when I meet our Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj, he said, no, 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 no. That can happen in a second. And also Prabhupada always said, it can happen in a second. But is it again a chintya beda beda tattva or not? It can take a long time, but it can happen in a second. It is both possible and always depends on the mercy, on the faith that we have. And that is our good fortune when we have association of the Rasika Vaishnava. The person that is living in the Ras, in the deep relationship of their identity in the spiritual realm, in their relationship to Radha Moha, to Srimati Radhika. So that is actually possible at any second, but also there are stages, but we should never be discouraged because even though there are stages, so we can check ourselves. At the same time, the mercy is always, always available. So, and he's asking, how can these contacts of these five items, like living in Brat, studying the scriptures, or here it is Srimad Bhagavatam mentioned, but we have also Chaitanya Taitamrita, we have also Radhara Sudaniti, we have all the Goswami's literatures, Vilapa Kusmanjali, especially when you want to enter into the feelings of a Dasi in the wake of our uh, Raghavna Das Goswami or Tulsi Manjai. How can these items, uh, you know, awaken the spark? They have the power. And uh, that depends on my faith. If I believe in this power, if I can understand that the magic can happen every day, if I can believe and have faith and have hope and have trust. To this Sri Rupa answers, these five extraordinary practices have such an inconceivable power that even the slightest touch with them can reveal both bhava and the object of bhava. 
That is a verse from Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So again, again we have this, that the slightest touch, slightest touch means also desire, right? If I cannot live in Vrindavan, but if I have such an intense uh, desire to be there, is that not a touch? We always hear that our Raga Bhakti is a mental, you know, religion or mental process. So the slightest touch with the deep desire to live in Braj mentally or with this uh, Sadaka Deha on one level, it doesn't count. You get it? Even the slightest touch with them can reveal both bhava and the object of bhava. So means the feelings of, you know, overwhelming belonging. And the object of bhava is our Ishta Devi. In this case, we are following as to be a Dasi of Srimati Radhika. Because our Rupa uh, Goswami is Rupa Manjari and we are followers of Rupa Nuga, right? So to connect that and to have that faith that even though I am a small beginner, I am full of faults, I have no power on myself, but just the slight contact means this greed, this loba, this desire, and that, you know, longing, even though I cannot, but I want to long. This is called Asha Bandhu. That is the, you know, hope that can nobody can uh, deny. And nobody can take away from my small heart, you know. Only I can block myself if I, uh, again, I more live in my doubts or in my mental circles. Mm -hmm. And we all know that. It's what Gurudev calls the ping pong. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes strong, sometimes weak. But that is also a development, right? To be strong and to have good association and to exchange with those devotees who are really fixed in their goal and they will sprinkle some dust of their mercy also on my small head and they will give me the, you know, the power to continue in my own practice and in my own desires. And then when these desires are so strong and we are connecting them to the five extraordinary practices of living in Raj, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, all these, what else was it? Associating with sar sadhus, performing Nama Sanketan and serving the Vigraha, these five main or let's say pillar practices in our bhakti have such an inconceivable power that even the slightest touch with them can reveal both bhava, can reveal real spiritual feelings and my connection to Radha Mohan, my connection to Srimati Radhika, my connection to Nitai Goranga. So <clears throat> that is a big hope. That is a big, big, big hope. And it doesn't seem to be unsurmountable stairs or steps that I feel I can never reach, right? It sometimes happens. And Baba says, but the sadaka will have to live in Vrindavan with anurag, meaning with respect, love, and loving attachment. Otherwise, he will commit offenses to the Holy Dharma. And as a result of the Dharma being dissatisfied with him, there will be a very long delay in the attainment of the desired result. So that is also a very interesting statement that uh, is made here, that the Dharma will recognize my mentality. And although the Dharma the Holy Dharma is very, very powerful and is very, very merciful. Also, there will be, how do you say that, recognition if I don't have the right attitude.
And that will be also reflected in my relationships. Like my relationship to my Gurudev. Gurudev sometimes will ignore me if I have too much of a false ego or chastise. Not always saying, oh, you are so great, you are such a Mahatma, you're such a great, you know, devotee. No, no, sometimes also, what are you doing? Where is your mind? Are you in Vrindavan or are you somewhere else? Where are you? Where are you identifying yourself? And what do you think is most important for you being in Vrindavan? So all these uh, helpers on the way are important to also always check myself. <laughs> Once I was so in my ego <laughs> that I said to Gurudev, always you are checking me. When will this checking ever stop? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that is a very good question. <laughs> Means when you are on the level that nobody needs to check you anymore, my sweet little baby. <laughs> but you know that babies, they have the stage also. <laughs> when mama is feeding them, at one point they say, no, I, 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 and they eat like they have the whole face. But they want to do it themselves, right? So that uh, stage... Uh, I also have that. I say to Guru, when when will this checking stop? <laughs> so it's loving exchange in Vrindavan, because we are also in Raga Bhakti. That is the difference. We don't have a fear of the Guru. We don't think that oh he's there to punish me or he is just like a pope or some high person. No, in Raga Nuga Bhakti we are friends, but not like. Friends, like in a slack way, you know, I can say to you whatever I like and, you know, it doesn't matter. No, it's still full of love and full of respect. That's what Baba says. We have to be there in Vrindavan with Anurag, with attachment to my relationship to Shiguru, for example, or my Vaishnavas. And there is an exchange of feelings in Anurag. But at the same time, there's so much respect and so much love and loving attachment. And then it will help us to also grow out of the mud of my own, you know, mind and my own uh, uh, conditioned uh, perceptions. And so Baba even says, and that is also to be noted, after he suffers for a long time and repents, the holy dharm will become satisfied and will make the attainment of the desired results of living in the dharm possible. So when we do something wrong, I mean terribly wrong, whatever it may be, we will feel inside some disconnection. There will be some emptiness. And we can always understand when this emptiness is happening in my life, I did something that is not so good. So I repent, I regret, and I pray again for mercy. And then again, there will be like an opening again. No, when you have a tap, sometimes it is so strongly, you know, that I cannot open it. It's somebody did some, and it is so tight. But there will be a time when I try to open the tap of my heart and I really have the right attitude again, it will be opened. And then the Dharm will also give the desired result and make it possible again. So whatever stage I am in, sometimes I'm more closed and sometimes I'm more open. There's always a good reason to have a faith and to develop the right attitude out of the dark into the light, into the hopefulness of love. And Baba says, there's no other place anywhere in the universe like Vrindavan that can give such a great arousement, means opening, to the Raga Nuga Sadaka in his Bhava Mai Braja Vasa Upasana. Means in translated uh, letters, ecstatic 
worship in the form of living in Braj. So, because the power of Rindavan or the connection to the inhabitants of Rindavan who are not different from Rindavan is so strong, even though I am fully aware that I am always again and again ping and pong and doing some mistakes and praying for mercy again, the power of Raj is always there for all of us. And it will give arising feelings. And that's why we always uh, go to Raj again and again and with a new hope and a new, like, fully, fully uh, expecting um, uh, miracles baby, no? If I go there like a baby, I will be always surprised what kinds of presents are there in the, you know, association with the sadhus. What kind of gifts are there in listening together the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, the Raga scriptures, especially we have the power of Sri Guru's mercy so much as I can say I am quite proud of it. <laughs> That we are listening, we as fallen souls, we can listen to the words of our Raghunathas Goswami to Sri Vilapakashmanjali in the association of those who are tasting this already and who always give from their hearts some pearls, no, some drops of mercy. We can be proud of this, we can be so happy about this and so proud that even though I may have not realized fully, you know, everything, and sometimes I feel completely blocked, <laughs> but still my Gurudev is helping me on every step of the way. And that is eternal. And every day it can happen. The mercy is flowing actually all the time. But Gurudev sometimes say, we are running around with an umbrella. <laughs> we don't want to get the rain because my ego is so strong. I can do it or my faults, you know, identity, my faults, uh, thinking and feeling because I'm, I'm very much uh, conditioned. Once I said to Gurudev, but Gurudev, you know, I was crying. I'm a conditioned soul. I cannot. Mm. And he said, so what? I am also a conditioned soul. <laughs> you know, we are all in one family of love and uh, we all have the same goal. We want to develop our, you know, spiritual love, our divine connection to our Swamini. We want to grow in this. We want to you know, live in this love and action. But sometimes life is such a testing uh, time that we feel I'm completely disconnected or what, or I feel, am I doing it right? Or do, am I doing the right thing? Oh, and then I realize when this comes, oh, I'm a conditioned soul. But see, Shimati Radhika loves all her babies. So also in the same way, our Gurudev, our Guru Manjari is loving you know, their babies and is connecting with them every day when he when they feel the loving uh, desire to connect. And I remember even Srila Prabhupada in the first explanations of Mahamantra, because the explanations of Mahamantra, they go also deeper and deeper. He said that the calling for Mother Hara is the crying of a baby for the mother. See, he said Mother Hara. He said the Mother Hara, and that who is Mother Hara? It's Shimati Radhika, our mother. She is also a mother to us. She is helping the babies to grow. And that crying, Prabhupada said, will make her, you know, come and help us. So, it's all the mercy what happens. And even though I am conditioned, even though I have my ups and downs in my feelings, in my personal life story, in my relationships, 
in my health, in my financial situation. If we look at it always from the positive side and at least are working to come back to the positive side, it will always open again. It will open again and again and again and again. And when we had our uh, New Year's uh, Kirtan in our, we were meeting here in Germany in the north together with Madhuri and Mohini and Shakshu and Gauravani and Braj Sundari and Brajeshwari and so many nice devotees. Gaura Sundara was there. All of these loving devotees and together we were floating in the holy name into the so-called new year. <laughs> it's always every day a new day, isn't it? It's eternally fresh and new if we look at it from a spiritual point of view. But still, these holidays are also a nice occasion to meet and to have nice prasharam and celebrate. We all thought that, yes, we will always, we will always desire to live in this love of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and try to share it with each other and to help each other to always find love again and again and again, connect love and serve love. And that is the love and action that we are wanting to you know, live in and inspire each other for for the new coming year and all years to come and all lives to come, whatever will come. I'm always a servant, a Darcy of Srimati Radhika, a servant of love. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. Ah. Rade, rade, thank you. Yes. Anybody wants to share? Otherwise, we will continue with the Sundaram's Kirtan lesson. Rade, rade, Sundaram. Yes, please. Who was there? It's Derek. Derek, rade. Rade, rade. I just wanted to say thank you for doing the Zooms. It's it is very helpful to keep connected and to build our faith. Radhi, Radhi. Thank you. You are so right. Thank you, Derek. Uh, I hope we'll meet in Vrindavan soon. Yeah, I just have uh, have to convince family <laughs> that I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> love, you know, love can. Love is doing the magic, nothing else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to inform you, Derek, that uh, this Zoom Sangha is all Suniti Mercy. <laughs> Gurdiv always says this, but I cannot understand this. Actually, it is Gurdiv's desire for us. That's what I feel. Srimati Radhika is desiring for us to always, you know, feel each other, to connect to each other. And that's why the modern technology has somehow, you know, in these times where not everyone can meet all the time, has given us this chance. And I feel lucky also to be part of this, to be serving this and to develop myself. Thank you for taking the trouble. <laughs> I am a troublemaker. <laughs> Ask my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your volcanic eruption of enthusiasm today. Thank you. <laughs> um, I also you so want much. to thank you. So and happy you. New Year. Happy New Year, yes. Yes, Ma Yoga Shakti. It was a nice oh, really? class on Sunday. Dayanidi, I'm sorry I interrupt you. Uh, no. no. No, no, it's okay. I, I just, <laughs> I just uh, want to say to you <laughs> well, from the you. bottom of my heart, Suniti, because, um, yes, yeah, so thank you for everything you do and um, your sharing today touched 
so deeply again and again my heart and you are sharing so honestly from your heart and this helps me so much because yeah i feel love and understanding and hope through your words and i want to thank you for this every time again and again thank you yeah i hope we will meet soon and hug soon <laughs> and i feel it's all it's all gurudev's mercy that you know, even though now he's in Delhi, I feel how he's feeling, you know, he has to take care of some things for checkup and, and family affairs, but he's always with us. He always wants to encourage us to be open and honest. And if you remember also Gurudev, he sometimes says, I'm only a student. I'm no teacher. I, I am the lowest. I am learning from you, you know, and I know when he says this, he's feeling it. He's not pretending or try to be nice, you know, and make us feel good. <laughs> he is feeling it because this is the feelings of a real lover of the divine. They never feel that they are the doer. They always are the viewer. They always feel that everyone else is helping me. I just try to be, you know, in the midst of good association. And what is the... What is the, you know, what to pretend, pretend is just, you know, I, I'm lying to myself and that is not a good idea, right? We have to be honest. We have to be strong. And even in weakness, we never forget what is the goal and we crawl back to Godhead if necessary, because there's many people behind me. They will always give me a kick also if I am down, you know? Like Baba said once, there's so many helpers on the way, we don't even know they are. Thank you, Ma Yoga Shakti, for your service. I want to thank you. And uh, happy, happy new year also. And let's continue the service and the good vibrations. And it will all be a festival every time we meet. <laughs> and who is this Bhima Sena? Lucklich. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Radhe Radhe. Hare Krishna, uh, Radhe Radhe. Of Janardhan Prabhu from Slovenia and the uh, Rajeshwari Mataji. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Thank you for your darshan on the Happy New Year's coming. I hope also we will meet again and again. And uh, yeah. we need <laughs> the you. nice young man devotees who help us. Becoming old now. We need help from you. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Radha Radha. Hare Bol. Radha Radha. <laughs>